So, so in this talk, I would like to uh, tell you a, a little bit about what I uh, uh, have been interested in the last few years, actually in the, in the quite a few years. Only, um, uh, only the difference is uh, at the beginning, I couldn't do anything. Now I could do something. So, and uh, I want to tell you there's something I can do, and uh, I want to tell you something I hope to do. Okay. So, so in this talk, I let, uh, let M to be a compact manifold of dimension N. So, so it will be a no more than a, N will be no more than a four. So, so of, of course everybody knows the manifold. I guess for this audience. So, in this audience, so. G be a Riemannian metric. Locally, this is a positive definite matrix value of the function. Okay. So, 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 so the curvature we denote by R G is the invariant of G and the diffeomorphism. So, namely, this is the only invariant property which does not depend on a, a, a change of a change of coordinate and so on. So, it measures how space is curved. So one of uh, essential problems in a differential geometry or in geometric analysis is to study how metrics with pres prescribed curvature properties interact with geometry and topology of underlying spaces. So because of this, many interesting geometric and an analytical problems arise. So in this talk, I will show you some, some examples. Okay. So let me start with uh, surfaces, two-dimensional case. So, so now the curvature is determined by a Gauss curvature. I'm not going to define what curvature is. Either you know it or you just take it for granted. Okay. So, so now the curvature is determined by a Gauss curvature, which is given by a single function. Say, say it's k. Okay. The most natural condition on the, on the metric is to make a Gauss curvature constant. That's the most, I mean, the simplest way to, to okay. And uh, it turns out sometimes the following uh, instinct is is uh, is, uh, is is good enough. Okay, so so the question is: Is there a metric with constant Gauss curvature? This is a uh, uh, very is a is a is is a very classical problem, and uh, and and maybe without even realizing that people have studied this for for a long long time. So so. So we let's uh, so since because of time, let me just say uh, mention a one approach. So we can approach to this problem by a PDE method. So this is uh, this is uh, um, this is uh, um, coincides with what uh, what uh, uh, what uh, recent trend. So so giving any metric G zero, so we deform it. Okay, since uh, since K Gauss curvature is constant, so hopefully you can deform the metric by single functions, you can make a, make a Gauss curvature to, to be constant. So, so if uh, this new metric G has a constant Gauss curvature, has a, Gauss, a constant Gauss curvature, then the U satisfies the following semi-linear equations. So probably people already saw, I mean, in, in this Congress, and many people probably in certain sections, and people have seen this equation quite a few times. So this is a semi-linear equations, and the lambda is a constant. So lambda is just this Gauss, the constant Gauss curvature. Okay, Gauss, constant Gauss. So, so, so this is direct computation. It simply follows from a definition of a curvature. And uh, if you can solve this equation, you can find the uh, find the metric of constant uh, curvature. So it uh, uh, it can be solved by elliptic method. It, uh, and see, and so I, I just mentioned a few people here. Lierenberg and the Kasdan Warder and Oban and so on. It can also be solved by using a, a curvature flow method, which, which was uh, started later, but um, so started uh, by Hamilton and uh, uh, Ben, ben Cho uh, made uh, uh, very important contributions and uh, end up some, we made some small contributions. So, so, so the, the advantage of this uh, uh, new method is, uh, is uh, you don't need to know a priori what an underlying manifold is. So, I mean, what I mean, you don't need to know what topology is, and uh, you simply try to solve the equations. In the end, you find uh, the, the metric with constant curvature. 
So, so of course, one can also use other means to to solve to to prove the existence. So, but uh, but uh, an, an, an the PDE method has certain advantages here. So, so the corollary of this. So, so there is a classical theorem in the in the in the textbook, okay, which is, uh, which is, says the following. So, giving any two-dimensional manifold and giving a conformal class, so called conformal class, namely you only change a metric by multiply by multiply some positive con functions. So, so the, the basic will, this change of uh, this wheel for changing of metrics, which I said before, does not change a conformal structure of uh, of uh, end line uh, of uh, of uh, the, the metric. The, the structure induced by metric. Okay. So, 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 so then there's a unique normalized metric, and in the same conformal class, and with constant Gauss curvature. That's what uh, we get from our previous uh, equations. So, so then the uh, immediate corollary of this is, uh, um, uh, the, okay. So, so, so that's what we said. Uh, a summarize of what I said before. Then the corollary from a classical and uh, result from textbook is uh, implies m is one of uh, is of this form is a is a quotient of uh, gamma and uh, universal covering is one of these things here okay so 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 of course i'm not going to say how to solve that differential equation but uh, there is a, when i say this i i, I say one of the reasons or you can say it's kind of key reasons, maybe not quite direct, but it's actually something behind. Is uh, for above success is uh, is our understanding a uh, kind of compactness. Okay, so here I somehow slightly not so precise. So it's understanding moduli space of uh, the metrics. So in the sense, in, in actually I should say in the in in the understand certain compactness. Okay, so so if I look at the uh, and uh, 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 the the metrics, all the possible solutions, um, or all the possible metrics with constant Gauss curvature, and this is given by gauss boulet theorem, and uh, you normalize volume to be one, and uh, and uh, so you you, uh, you you model all the possible diffeomorphisms. So so here sigma is the surface of Riemann uh, genus G. Okay, so it's, uh, sigma is just our m and, and the previous page. So for h equal to zero, we know it's just a round sphere, and this is just one point. And if h is one, if a genius is one, then the sigma is a, is a, is a, is a torus, okay? And uh, so m one is a modular space of lattices, modular equivalence. So you can, you can, you can easily identify as a as certain standard uh, space. For h bigger two, then this is uh, again is is known is a uh, is a. Uh, it's a three h minus h dimensional space, and it's uh, it's, it's essentially like a manifold. It may have some finite quotient singularities because of uh, automorphism so of uh, of things. So, so, so in general, it's not compact. It has a natural compactification called the manifold compactification. Geometrically, this is equivalent to uh, studying a how matrix with a constant Gauss curvature degenerate or develop singularities. So give so so to be more precise, you're giving any sequence of such a matrix, like namely the metric with certain normalizations, which uh, so what are possible limits in the suitable topology? For example, in a so-called Gorman of Hausdorff topology, this is quite a weak topology. Okay, so so anyway, in certain suitable topology, which I'm not going to define, so 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 possible limits has been understood, have been understood, and can be roughly described as follows. So this is just basically remind you what you probably uh, certainly you, you saw this one in one place or another. So for example, h equal to one is called a collapsing case. Namely, suppose this is a torus. Okay, so you certainly the cross section here is a circle. So 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 now one thing you do is you change a moduli. Okay, for for example, you can you can shrink in uh, one direction. So what you can do is uh, you basically can. Uh, Rescale it so that uh, the length of this uh, longest uh, direction maybe is one, and uh, then take a limit. So in the limit, it becomes a circle, for example. Okay, becomes a circle. So it becomes a one-dimensional circle. So, 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 
So that's a collapsing case, well, collapsing case. So, um, so basically, we shrink uh, one direction, simultaneous, uh, uh, shrink uh, the curve, family of curve, in a, uh, uh, family of parallel curves, circles. Okay. So, so, so another way of uh, 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 to, to do a degeneration is a uh, is a long collapsing case. You, if you are, if uh, your genus is bigger to two. And you think you have a Riemann surface, so, so here I draw a picture of a genus two. So, so what you can, how can you degenerate? Basically, you can stretch it, okay, to stretch it, to, to pull it, uh, pull away. So in the in the end, you get the, you get the, you get, the, you get two cusps. You get two cusps. Basically, you shrink some closed geodesics here, and go to a cusps. And you know exactly how this is goes. Basically, you you you. You you chop the uh, chop this part, and the conformally this part can be easily identified, and you can even write down the explicitly what matrix we have in this part and in the limiting part. That's the limiting part. That's the limiting part. Okay. So this is simply uh, you can do it by uh, by uh, by uh, uh, sing, uh, complex analysis. Okay. So 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 what I try to say here before I go into a high dimensions. So I try to say here is uh, in two dimensions, and uh, you, you, you have a, you have a comp we have a complete understanding of uh, singularities, or how this uh, cannot metrically degenerate. And this is nothing new. It's, it has been known for a for long, long time. And I probably different places we put it described uh, in a different way, OK? Slightly different way. So. So what about the high dimensions? So, so first, let me introduce the um, definition. So I say G is Einstein if a rich curvature is multiple for curvature tensor. So we again, we normalize it. So, so that lambda is minus 1, 0, and 1. So basically, three cases. So it's a negative case, and a vanishing case, and a zero case. So lambda, you sometimes call the Einstein constant. And, uh, and uh, where the rich is below the rich curvature, it's only part of curvature. It's, it measures the deviation of volume form from Euclidean one. Because the curve, because if a space is curved, the volume form may be different. So it's a, so from one point to another, the volume form may be different. So this measures the. Okay. So so uh, I make two remarks. One first is a dimension two case. Uh, Einstein metric is simply a metric with con constant Gauss curvature. Okay. So every. Everything determined by Gauss curvature, including Rich curvature. So, so also in this uh, in the geometry so far, we only study a, a static case. So, so this is only a like a static case of uh, generating Einstein equations, okay, which is uh, which is uh, uh, in general case uh, it should be a hyperbolic equation. Okay. So, so here this is a little. Uh, and so I try to explain you in the, in the, uh, what the rich curvature is. So basically, you look at the point, fix a point, and look at the nearby point, which is sufficiently close to a p, and and the v is the v is the unit tangent in the uh, of a direction of a geodesic from a p to x. Okay. So then you compute the compute the volume form at the point x, and compare with the volume form at the point p, which are denoted by g g v zero. And the deviation is been by rich curvature, and this can be used as a definition. Can be used as a definition, but uh, this is not a standard way of uh, uh, defining a rich curvature, and uh, uh, this is basically a, a theory of a result of Cartan. Okay. So in local coordinates, in terms of local coordinates, of course we have a flexibility of choosing coordinates because uh, there are many ways of doing that. So if you choose a coordinates such that uh, uh, it satisfies some actual conditions, and it's possible to do that, so the so-called harmonic coordinates here, so then the rich curvature is, uh, is of uh, a nice form. So this is basically Laplacian of a metric tensor, a metric, uh, a matrix valued functions, and plus some low order terms. When I say low order terms, that means uh, they are just uh, only depends on first derivative, okay, first derivatives, but uh, it could be nonlinear. Okay, so actually, these low-order terms 
are nonlinear terms are quadratic in the first derivatives. So, so, so Laplacian here is the general is the Laplacian for general Riemannian matrix. So notice, notice in the following things, this Laplacian itself depending on depends on a, a matrix. So this is a nonlinear equation. Even the first term is nonlinear. It's nonlinear. So, so Einstein equation is nonlinear, and so that's why it's uh, it's uh, make it harder to do. Okay, harder to do. So, I mean, of course, you already saw an example of this. That's in two-dimensional case. That's a semi-linear equation, in a sense. Okay? But uh, in general, it's more complicated. So, so let's assume uh, M is a uh, three-dimensional. Okay, I have to move it a bit fast. So, so if uh, Adam is an uh, uh, Einstein matrix, that is this. So then you can still one can still prove uh, M is of the form of this. Okay? So, 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 so then the M has, uh, has definite topology. So, so then you can, one can ask, does M ask a question, does M admit Einstein metric? In general, it's no. So Solstein's geometrization conjecture states that any three manifold can be decomposed in a natural way into this Einstein three manifold plus some graph manifold. So graph manifold is a kind of uh, 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 where understood manifold. Where by where understood, I mean uh, maybe 50, 40 years ago, people already know uh, understood what they, they are. Okay. So the Pangori conjecture is uh, one one of these special cases. So so Perma has solved uh, this conjecture by using a rich flow introduced by uh, Richard Hamilton. So I'm not going to a uh, and spend too much time on it. So, but I want to remind you what the, basically what the, what the Perman did is uh, is again is tried and is in some uh, it again is uh, is understanding singularity formation of rich flow. So here is a rich flow. So it deforms a metric towards the Einstein metrics. So. So for, for there is a, this is a not parabolic equation, but it's a close to parabolic equation, so that there is a, there's a, a local existence by Hamilton and simplified by the Turk. And uh, also Hamilton established a, a rich analytical theory for this flow. So it, it has been known, it was known a um, while ago, if a rich, actually, <coughs> at least in the 80s, if a rich flow has a global solution, possibly after a proper scanning, okay, which converge to a, as t goes to infinity, converge to a smooth metric, g infinity, then the limiting metric, g infinity, is the Einstein metric. Okay. So, the, so by the previous things I stated, then the universal covering standard. By that, by that I mean uh, it's either Euclidean space or, or a three sphere, or it's a, Hyperbolic three space. Okay, so 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 this is the exact geometrization. Okay, geometrization. So 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 the things seem to be quite uh, quite nice. Namely, you only need to prove a certain equation has a global solution, and indeed that's true in dimension two. Okay, and however, dimension three is not true. We know because there are some uh, some manifolds like graph manifolds do not have a uh, Einstein matrix, so you cannot have this. Okay, you cannot have these uh, long term existing things. So what uh, what the best repairman did is to give a complete understanding of topology of singularity formation in dimension three. So so two of his main technical advances are, uh, are estimate in genetic radius and the curvature in dimension three. And uh, so this in order to do uh, this so called long collapsing estimate, he introduced uh, a new tool new lens function and uh, did some uh, developed uh, 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 theory for this reduced the lens function in parallel to a analogous to a, to a to a standard distance function in the in the Riemannian uh, in the standard textbook on Riemannian geometry so 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 I want to tell you uh, it's uh, in remaining time to tell you what the See what happens to four-dimensional spaces, and uh, the situation is quite different in dimension four. The Ricci curvature does not uh, actually. This is uh, it's quite different from dimension four and up. Okay, so 
So it does not determine a, cur a curvature point wisely. It's less rigid. For example, you have a simply connected space, it's a complex projective space, which has a, is homogeneous. Certainly, it's Einstein has Einstein metric, but it's not space form. The space form is, is what I mean. It's not the one of these standard things. Namely, it's not S4, of course. It's not the R4. It thinks R4 is not compact. It's not the hyperbolic H4. Okay. So, so, so in four dimensions, the the Einstein equation is less rigid, and the solution of Einstein equation is less rigid than the in the two dimension and three dimension. Okay. So, so, but however, in the in the four dimensions, we do still have we still have some some constraints. So unlike. Uh, I still have some of these special features in the uh, uh, in dimension four. So, so in, so what is a, a canonical structure in dimension four? This has been used, uh, uh, studied a lot in the last uh, probably thirty years, or maybe twenty-seven years, whatever. So, so, so in dimension four, we have a so-called self-dual structures. So. So consider uh, so this can be uh, can be uh, simply put this way. So you look at the four by four ski symmetric uh, matrices. So uh, look at the space of all the four by four ski symmetric matrices. So it can be decomposed into two copies of uh, spaces of uh, of uh, three by three ski symmetric matrices. So this is giving. So it can be explicitly given as follows. You can define a so-called Hardy operator. So which are, uh, which giving giving any inner product you can define that so so you you, you have r4 and you have uh, inner product standard Euclidean inner product then you can define Hodge operator as follows you choose also normal basis you you define this and I only define half of that the other half is just uh, you just make a star square to be identity you get you pick up other half okay, other half so so and so, so, so if you are giving a manifold, and uh, with a remaining manif uh, metric, then then you have a family of uh, of uh, R four with uh, with inner products. So, so you can define this the fam point, uh, fa family wisely. So, so this way you can induce the decomposition of a tangent uh, on the tangent space on the tangent space. Okay. So. So, so this part is exactly the, called the self-dual part. It's the anti self part. So this is corresponds to this decomposition here. Decomposition here. Now, as I said, the self-dual structure is uh, was used in the gauge theory and was studied a lot and and uh, and, uh, and there was um, found any uh, found many applications in uh, studying a differential topology of four manifolds. So. So here I want to uh, um, um, actually since I was a, a student, I was uh, uh, interested in uh, finding a, 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 a more in, uh, using this in more intrinsically in the sense is uh, impose this on the, on the metrics. So so again, this is quite a, a very classical. So this is uh, so given the previously decomposition of a, uh, on the coten uh, on the on the tangent uh, by by wedge two of ten is a bundle, then uh, you can have a decomposition of curvature. So this is a curvature tensor. Curvature tensor, even though I didn't define it, is a is a is a symmetric operator on the on the on the on the, on the wedge two of uh, of uh, of uh, tangent bundle. So accordingly, you have a decomposition of a curvature. Okay. So so W decomposes two parts. It's called a wire tensor. It vanishes. The geometric meaning is uh, is uh, measures uh, conform conformality. Okay, so Z is the chestness of rich curvature. Uh, so here is equality. Here is only is equivalent. It's not exactly this form. It's the two matrices are equivalent. Okay, and S is scalar curvature, which is uh, which is the chest total chest of uh, four curvature. Okay. So, 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 so then we have two types of canonical metrics, which I have been interested in. Uh, Studying, at least uh, to get uh, uh, so one is Einstein, namely z equal to zero. We have we have seen that. Another class uh, is uh, is uh, uh, z is uh, anti self two and of constant curvature, namely the w plus equal to zero and s equal to constant. So uh, so so 
so there's always a, a special class of uh, manifolds called the Keller manifolds. So in this dimension four case, it's Keller surfaces. So in case of Keller geometry, there are actual more metrics. That is constant, uh, Keller metrics with constant uh, scalar curvature. So this case is basically is four into a, is in some sense four into a second class. So in this case, W plus is not necessarily zero, but it can be written as a function of S. Okay. So it's a, it's a, can be written as a uh, very uh, cannot go away in the function of S. Okay. So so. So if S is zero, it's uh, exactly anti safety matrix. So, so let me uh, mention uh, to, uh, few, uh, to, to motivate. So in the four dimensions, uh, even though this is not the main theme of, uh, of my talk today, but uh, in the four dimensions, as I mentioned before, it's not, uh, it's not as, as, uh, as uh, like Einstein metric or these metrics are not as, uh, as decisive as, uh, as uh, in the dimension two or three. But still, um, we uh, the existence of such a canonical matrix imposes strength, uh, strong topological constraints on the underlying four manifolds. And, uh, and uh, there are, uh, so let me just mention two of them, okay, to, to because of time. So if M is a homo homotopic to a force field and uh, admits an anti safety metric, then it's diffeomorphic to force, force field. So, so only, only, only uh, differentiable with only a differentiable structure on the force field, which admits a canonical anti safety structure, is a is a standard structure. Okay, so for Einstein one is there's a uh, 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 there's a uh, uh, very old old uh, uh, inequality called the Hitchin Sop inequality. The basically say a signature can be bounded in terms of Euler numbers. Okay, and this can be proved by using a uh, uh, this gauss place chain formula and uh, the signature formula, okay? And moreover, equality holds uh, in the hitching soft if and only if M is diffeomorphic K3. So for example, in the 80s, people found the, found the homotopic uh, like uh, and K3, uh, with, which are different, different uh, homomorphic to, to K3, but not, dif uh, not differentiable. Uh, not dif uh, not diffeomorphic to K three, then those things do not have uh, Einstein matrix because uh, because of this. Okay, so 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 uh, for example, this uh, you can say you take CP two, blow up at the K points, and uh, does not have uh, Einstein matrix for K B equal to nine. That simply can be easily proved by using a previous inequality, and uh, and uh, the, pr the existence was much harder. So it, it indeed, for k less equals eight, you can prove the existence. The, the Hitching soft inequality was uh, was uh, in, was uh, refined by uh, uh, and uh, and generalized by many people. So particularly by uh, Claude Le Brun in the early 80s, when the underlying four manifolds have a uh, long vanishing cyberwitten invariant. So he he if a cyber, cyber if a cyborg Witten invariant is non-zero. He actually proved you can replace uh, two thirds by one third. That's a big improvement. Okay. So, so there are many uh, obstructions. So, and uh, and, uh, the, in, uh, and so I cannot mention uh, because of time. But uh, there, are, there are there are very uh, uh, nice results on the on the differentiable four manifolds. We do not have uh, Einstein matrix. Okay. So, so. I will come back in the end if I have one. So, so there are many existence results on these metrics. For example, and in the Keller case, we know everything. In the in the Keller case, they have everything. So it's a, a yaws Calabi con conjecture, and Oban yaw theorem for negative case, and uh, I did a positive case, and uh, there's there are, there's a, a two, uh, one case left by uh, uh, the CP two blob uh, two points. And uh, uh, which does not have a Keller Einstein metric, but it uh, it actually admits a Hermitian Einstein metric. That was proved uh, more recently. Actually, I forgot. It uh, should be a Chen, LeBron, and the Webb. So, I'm sorry for for this. Uh, I should add one more line here. So, giving any four manifold n, and uh, and tops proved uh, this uh, 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 very nice. 
the general existence here. Existence here. So one can also use a gluing method to construct the many example of instant metrics. And, uh, and uh, that's, uh, you can find uh, many of them in the, in, the, in the recent work of Frank Parquet and uh, Michael Anderson and so on. So in general, of course, I hope uh, 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 there is a natural decomposition of giving four manifolds such that each piece either admits Einstein metric or is of uh, understood topological type. But this may be a too hard problem at the moment. And uh, Hamilton rich flow provides a method of deforming a given metric towards Einstein ones. So I, I pause this page because I want to basically this last one. So, so even though this is a hard problem and, uh, uh, and the rich flow does provide a formal way of doing that, okay, even though there are many technical technicalities uh, left. So, so but it's, uh, uh, for other cannot type of canonical metrics, uh, whether there is a way of uh, deforming, uh, this deformation process so that uh, to, to which plays the role as, uh, as the rich flow did, does. And, uh, and uh, even this formal way, it's not quite clear. Okay. So, so, so a few years ago, and uh, Chig and I started a program which we aimed at uh, understanding uh, how Einstein four manifold degenerate and develop singularities. So this is analogous, basically, at that time, actually, we, and I mean, now you can say, okay, and uh, uh, paramount things also somehow in this thing. But when we started this, we are more like try to imitate what two-dimensional case. That's why the, I spend a little bit of time on two-dimensional case. So, uh, so, so uh, we try to understand how, how Einstein uh, metrics degenerate, okay? So it's, uh, you can also see it's uh, how to compatify a modular space of uh, of Einstein metric dimension four. Of course, you can also do the same quest prob uh, do the same thing in the high dimensions. The only thing in high dimensions is uh, it seems to be more is uh, uh, is uh, is less tractable at the moment. Okay. So so in high dimension, maybe if you impose the for the conditions, so called uh, okay, we start the uh, Einstein metric of certain type like self two types, then the uh, and the question is more tract uh, tractable. Okay. And uh, we. And uh, we do have some works on that, but uh, but let's uh, uh, let's uh, uh, I'm not going to talk about that here. So 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 first, I want to show you how to bound the curvature and when the metrics may collapse. Okay, that may collapse. So 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 I give you two um, things, and uh, the first one is uh, and so this is one of uh, this uh, maybe uh, anyway it's a mathematical talk, so I better state some theory. So, <laughs> uh, so there are some uniform constants, e, p, n, and c, that on, only depends on dimension, okay? So in this, uh, uh, such that for any metric g on a four manifold, a uh, four dimensional geodesic ball, with, uh, uh, which, which you have uh, uh, Einstein, which satisfies Einstein equations, and lambda is normalized, if L2 norm of curvature is small, Listen, the, again, I remind you, this is a universal constant. It's the dimension free. It's small, but dimension free. Oh, sorry, that not dimension. It's, a, it's metric. It does not depend on this metric here, okay? It uh, only depends on dimension. So then uh, we can bound the curvature on a smaller ball, on a smaller ball. So, uh, so this is only make it a uh, scanning variant. So, so this is a uh, uh, um, uh, very, um, it's, it's, a, it's a theorem we like a lot because uh, and this theorem sounds like, sounded like it's an uh, analysis, but it's not quite, not complete uh, 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 analysis because, uh, because uh, a priority giving a space, giving a geodesic ball, a geodesic ball can be anything. We don't know a priority what the topology of that geodesic ball is, right? I mean, you're giving any space, you can put the metric, make it a geodesic ball, make a geodesic ball. So, so this, uh, this theorem, unlike even though it's uh, in, uh, in the some sense resembles uh, uh, some things in the harmonic maps or in the young mills equations, but those cases, you are probably there's no problem involved in the topology of underlying space. But here, with this, this actually, I probably don't know what topology is. So this is, uh, result itself is actually not only bound the curvature, also so certain way restrict the topology of uh, so in particular, it implies if you look at a smaller, so this constant, 
a smaller uh, ball and it's of, if of the form. So it's basically uh, where the U is uh, open set in R4 and the gamma is a neopotent subgroup acting on U by some asymmetries. So here I say it's, uh, the metric may not be quite uh, Euclidean, but it's, uh, it's equivalent to Euclidean. Okay. So, 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 so this way is, uh, and tells you uh, basically with the curvature bound, the topologically, the geodesic ball is, uh, is uh, it, it may not be a Euclidean ball, but it's, uh, may, it may still have a topology, but its topology is, uh, is, uh, is still is and certain control, okay? So, so, so one corollary of this can be given as follows. This also somehow tells you why this is uh, an, 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 an nice. So, so we, I said before, the rich curvature does not determine a curvature point wisely, right? Because uh, the rich, uh, uh, rich curvature as just look at algebra, there are more components in the curvature tensor than the rich curvature tensor. So, so but however, by, uh, there are some control. So by Gauss-Bolletian formula, I told you before, and because uh, the metric is Einstein, then you can, you can immediately see the L2 norm of a curvature is simply uh, given by a Euler number, certain multiple of Euler number, okay? So, so it follows that condition on the L2 norm of curvature is true. Since the total norm of curvature is finite, since the total norm of L2 norm of curvature is finite, so this condition is basically true outside finite many points, finite many points, okay? So, so we do have that condition outside finite many points, and number of points are uniformly bounded by Euler number, by Euler number. Actually, it it's can be bounded by linear multiple of Euler number. So, so, so then outside these finite many points, I do have a curvature bound. So basically, geometry is controlled up to a certain, uh, fi uh, up, uh, up to a finite many points. And, uh, and, and, uh, and this is uh, um, pretty good. Even, even with that curvature bound, if you do some uh, more sophisticated uh, way, like a so-called scaling up and blowing up techniques, you can also get some information near those finite many points, but which, which I probably cannot discuss here, but you will see something in a moment. So, so our second uh, sec estimate is on the NGT radius. So say uh, if MG is a compact Einstein 4 manifold with rich curvature this, okay, then its NGT radius is bounded from below on the open set of almost four measures. Okay, so I, here I only state roughly. The, the basically, you can bound the integrity radius. So, so, so those two cases, you cannot collapse. It's just like in a Riemann surface case. In a high genius case and Riemann field case cannot collapse. Only case is a rich flat case. That's torus. And uh, in the torus, in the corresponding to that case, even in four domain, it does collapse, does collapse. So this uh, is a shot. So, so, so now, I, uh, by result of uh, GROMO, we know the modi space of, uh, so I, I cite a re, uh, more classical result of uh, with Einstein constant uh, this, and on the four manifold can be compatible in a weak topology. So this is a very weak topology. So for example, I probably do not even know those limits are land space. Uh, we only know those limits are land space, but which may not have any smooth point at all, a priori. Okay? So, 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 Want to show you this uh, now theorem actually implies these those limiting spaces are quite good. So to be more precise, assume uh, M I G I be a sequence of Einstein manifolds which converge to a length space. So it's a, it's a basic metric space, metric space which you can compute the length of curves. Okay. So in the Gorma house of topology, the problem is to show the regularity of this and the geometric structure around the singularities. So there are two cases. Basically, one is non-collapsing case, so so namely x has a dimension four, so it does not dimension does not drop, and the collapsing case, namely the limiting space dimension, and the, has a smaller dimension. Okay, so 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 non-collapsing case was uh, known long time, quite a while ago. So so Einstein, so in the non-collapsing case, basically there are two types of things. 
So one type is, uh, is uh, only with isolated singular coaching singularities. Okay, so so that's on known in the late eighties even. So this is the only case if a diameter is uniform bounded. So namely, at any if we are stand here, any any finite distance, if there's singularity formation, you only see a coaching singularity. Okay, and it does happen. This example shows you it does happen. It does happen. So at any finite uh, distance from an uh, observer, you can only have a, you can only observe a coaching singularity. And uh, this is something new in dimension four because you don't have this in dimension two, right? Because dimension two, the cusp only can develop at infinity. That there. So, so of course, then there's a cusp type thing, cusp type thing. Okay. So, 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 so. So maybe I uh, uh, skip this. So, we, I need to classify all the possible cusp at infinity. And this is not completely done because uh, and to I so in the four in the two dimensional case you have this uh, cusp where very you can even write down matchup. In the four dimension, you presume you can do that, but it's uh, it, it will be more involved because it might develop a cusp along the Riemann surfaces along the Riemann surfaces. Okay, so 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 in case of Calabio, uh, in case of Kalanistan metrics and the models have been constructed. So, so, and so this is uh, and built on a, uh, uh, all of these cups should be constructed. Uh, it should be already constructed in, in, uh, in my, uh, in my joint work with uh, Yao, when I was, uh, even when I was a student. Okay. So the real case was not quite uh, understood yet, but the, the, the real case is, uh, 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 I think it's doable in the sense because it's a, uh, it, because uh, and, and from what we know so far, it's it's uh, it's amount to studying a uh, Einstein four manifold with uh, symmetries with uh, with with long long trivial and uh, with uh, symmetries with uh, continuous symmetries. So it should be reduced to lower dimensional things. Okay. But low the reduction to low dimension and uh, reduced metric on low dimension may not be a Einstein metric, but it satisfies those other equations. So, so then there's a collapse in the case. So it's amount to understanding possible collapsing limits. So the dimension drops. So, so in, it does happen. For example, K3 surface, K3 surface can uh, can degenerate to a S2 minus 24 points. Right. This is follows from a uh, follows from a uh, 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 this uh, uh, is. It's one of example one of examples uh, from a mirror symmetry, and uh, also called large complex limits and so on. So 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 recently, uh, my student and uh, our own neighbor and I tried to do something to analyze this more more closely. So 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 using a, a here are something we can prove, just to name a few. So using a work of uh, uh, Jeff Chiga and myself, I stated a moment ago, and. So we can prove if MIGI is a sequence of Einstein four manifolds with their Euler number bounded, so so convert to length space, then away from finite many points, uh, X is the remaining orbifold, the remaining orbifold. Okay. So 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 of course those finite many points is where the curvature concentrates, curvature concentrates, and a simpler case if you assume no such a no, if you assume no such a PI, no such a bad point, then X is actually rich, is a flat orbifold, and MI is simply an orbifold bundle over X by near potent manifold. So we do need to, to, to understand completely, we do need to, to, to understand the, the X around those uh, finite many points. To examine the structure around finite many points using a blow up analysis, one is led to studying a complete uh, rich flat matrix with these conditions. These conditions, okay, and it's not done yet, I should say, but it's a, uh, and <coughs> it's uh, and so so here are something we know, so so for Calabria case, then for Kalanistan case, so you have these uh, ex ex uh, uh, examples of complete rich flat manifolds, Calabria mani manifolds with uh, with uh, with uh, 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 with uh, finite uh, air to normal curvature, and uh, and uh, 
here are a few examples of them. Best guys expect they are best all of them. Why best all of them? I mean, so you might, uh, uh, so it's best four kinds of them. Okay. So, so those four kinds basically can be divided into a, can be a, can be a, an, uh, if above expectation holds, so there are basically two types of singularity for those PI. So one time arise from a minimum resolution of finite quotient. Okay. Geometry could be two types. Topological, they are one kind, but geometric, there are two kinds. One is ARE space, one is ARF space. Depends on a geometry, the length of circle at the infinity. Okay. So another arises from a rational elliptic surface with one fiber removed. So you start uh, from CP2, you take a pencil of uh, elliptic curves, they, they intersect the line point, you blow up them, you get so called rational elliptic surface, which is a unique elliptic surface. You lick a rational elliptic surface, and you remove one fiber on the complement as well. So, so, so real cases, we still uh, need to work harder on that. So, so, so maybe I should say, oh, so far I talk about Einstein case. So we do know a lot about the anti safety case. I do expect there's a similar picture uh, for that. And, uh, so, so, for example, for lung collapsing case, uh, a, a few years ago, Jeff Yaklovsky and I proved the compactness theorem for, for this. Okay. So, so this is a, a knowledge of uh, Anderson, Nakajima, and myself did uh, for Einstein, for many folks in the non collapsing case. So, so this time, the key issue in the proof is a one estimate, which is trivial in case of Einstein matrix, because uh, will be Grom of Bishop Grom of volume comparison, and. Uh, and uh, I, I think I can also prove an analogy of Chica. Uh, my the, the curvature estimate I did for Einstein case. So if so, then I, I haven't written up this, I should confess. So if so, one can uh, carry out the same program on the anti safety matrix as we did for Einstein once. Okay. So so of course you can also say uh, try to extend this to a Ricci flow case. Ricci flow case. Which I have, we haven't, I haven't spent much time yet. So, and uh, something certainly can be, uh, can be done, and um, but there you need one does need uh, some actual, uh, not actual effort. So, for example, I expect the curvature estimate Chica and myself can be extended to entire solution, so called so called non singular solution of GT of normalized bridge flow. Okay, so so this is based on what, uh, what I proved uh, with uh, Hong in the. On the young mules. So, so maybe I um, as time is up. So I mention uh, things I to, as a kind of interesting observation. So we do know a lot. Uh, I do know something about rich flow, and particular to know how rich flow develops singularity in the Keller case. In the Keller case, and for example, for instance, the singularity of Keller rich flow. So what is Keller rich flow? It's just a rich flow. But uh, if I start with a Keller metric. The rich flow turns out to preserve a Keilerian structure, okay. and this actual structure. So, in the sense, I study a self-do kind of matrix, and uh, and around the rich flow. Okay. So, 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 so it, it does have some actual conditions. So, it makes life uh, simpler, life simpler. So, for example, in finite time, the only singularity for rich flow in the Keller case is caused by a presence of rational curve self intersection minus one. So namely, you might you blow down in the minus one sphere to get another surface, Keller surface, or it's a, or by ruling of a, like a family of a rational curves. Namely, you have a ruled surface, and at a finite time, you kill the ruling, go to a Riemann surface, and continue the flow. Okay? So, so basically, this is in the joint work with uh, uh, in the uh, um, Zhang Zhou and uh, and uh, Zhang Song. Okay? So, so. Uh, so unless the underlying Keller surface is rational, so in that case, we basically see a rich flow be extinct at finite time. So after finite many complex surgeries of this type, the rich flow has a global solution, which converges to either the Keller-Einstein metric or collapse to a canonical metric on the punctured Riemann surface with prescribed behavior around those punctures. So, so, so in the a, in a, in a Keller case, we know everything. In a, and uh, another up, the last observation is uh, if I start, so this was studied in uh, when I was a student, 
a lot in one of the students. So, so if I just look at the, in a, uh, this, this, you can think this is a nice uh, observation. So if I start with simply connect the elliptic surface, let's make life simpler. We assume it's a minima, for example. So we have an elliptic surface. So this is a four manifold and with holomorphic map onto S2 and another one, okay? And suppose this one is only is obtained by doing a logarithmic transformation along the two smooth fibers with the core prime multiplicities, then it was proved by Donaldson theory long, long time ago. It's M and M prime homeomorphic, but not diffeomorphic, not diffeomorphic. So now I do have two color things. They are, they are homeomorphic to each other, but not diffeomorphic to each other around the color ratio flow. So, so you see what, the, I mean, certainly the effect is not a local, it's a global because the differential structure is different now. So then let's see in the end what their difference is. So in the end, as we, uh, so I said rich flow deform anything. So you run the rich flow. So in the end, the rich flow, so they go, you go to two canonical metrics. Say so one is a G and G prime. So their difference is not that big. The difference is that this, First, uh, they satisfy the same equation on S2 with finite and outside finite many points. And the uh, only difference is uh, this G prime dif differs from G at two actual points where they have a cortical singularity. So it could be like one is a degeneration of another in some sense. Okay. So, so, so this is in the Keller case. I cannot say much about the real case. which uh, so. So of course there are there are many examples of uh, uh, non-diffeomorphic homeomorphic manifold, and uh, so it will be interesting to see what uh, what uh, the difference in the in the last end. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions? Probably sorry for. Five minutes over time. <laughs> uh, if I uh, yes, I mean if uh, yes or no, and uh, yes, if uh, if you have a way of deforming a metric towards a conformal self skew metric, it should give a potential way of. Yeah, uh, of course, also assuming that some technicality can be solved. Okay. So, thank you again. <laughs>